welcome to Capitol Hill. There's been a lot of news recently about job cuts, but the big picture today came in the March on Employment figures, which showed there was some jobs growth. 44,000 extra jobs in full-time and part-time employment during March. Business leaders were in town today too to twist the arm of state and federal leaders to cut regulation, and they appear to have made some progress. Joining me to discuss the day are Labor Senator Doug Cameron and Liberal MP Dan Tien. Welcome to you both. Hi, Lindell. Hi, Lindell. We'll go first to the unemployment figures, and Julia Gillard had some good news to, uh, to boast about today. We have an economy, the fundamentals of which is strong, and that's been reaffirmed today by our unemployment figures. Uh, we see unemployment figures where unemployment has stayed low, and as remarked upon in the room, our economy has created more than 40,000 jobs. That means the Australian economy in the last month has created a third of the jobs created in the total US economy. Doug, as I said in the introduction, there's been a lot of news about job cuts. Is mm. this, this news today of jobs growth and unemployment staying level of, at 5.2% something of a surprise? Oh, no, it's not, because the economy is uh, what, what's described as a patchwork economy. There's some real problems in areas like manufacturing, and yet uh, other areas of the economy are growing. And uh, if you look at our job figures compared to any other advanced economy, we are the envy of the world. Dan, this does show, doesn't it, that there is uh, some health in the economy while the coalition likes to say there's, there's not a lot of confidence in business, that people worried about debt. There's actually, people are actually employing, aren't they? Oh, Linda, we just have to keep everything a little bit in perspective. This is one month's jobs figures. They're fairly volatile. If you look over the last 12 months when it comes to full-time employment, we're 23,000 jobs down. And if you look at employment for the last 12 months, we've seen growth of just 0.3%. So I think we have to be a little bit careful just judging the figures on one month. There is some differences in the states you both represent. Dan, uh, unemployment rose in Victoria. What's causing the trouble in the Victorian economy? Well, manufacturing in particular is doing it very hard in Victoria. Uh, also, confidence is not high. And I think with the advent of the carbon tax coming, uh, I think that people are extremely concerned. Uh, they're hanging on to their money. They do not have the confidence in the, uh, the way that this government is going about running the economy. And so I, I think there are, there are real worries in, in the state of Victoria. Uh, what we need to see is some good, sensible economic management uh, to get Victoria uh, back on board. And the carbon tax, unfortunately, won't do it for this state. Well, that's a, that's a $70 billion deficit. Uh, from the black hole from the uh, coalition. I mean, give us a break about uh, good economic management. The uh, economic management of your economic team is an absolute joke. D Doug, if we can go to New South Wales, unemployment was down in New South mm. Wales. What, what is going right? Is the federal government uh, doing the right thing by New South Wales or not by Victoria? Or is there an element of, of state government impact as well? Oh, look, I think, uh, you know, there's always an element of what the state government does, but I think the, the big impact uh, is, is federal issues everywhere. I mean, it's, it's how the government runs the economy federally, and we're doing a good job, and that's why there's jobs growth. I mean, if you listen uh, to some of the coalition MPs, and Dan's just, you know, fallen into the same sort of rhetoric and spin, you know, you'd think we were Greece or Italy. Well, we're not Greece or Italy. We are a strong economy with some particular problems in, in some specific areas. Dan, does, it, does the, the differences in state unemployment figures just show that patchwork nature of the economy? Oh, I think it's, it's, it's deeper than that. I think that we, what we aren't seeing is the government governing for all Australians. I think the, the regulation that they've put on the economy, uh, I think the, uh, what we're seeing with the advent of the carbon tax is that in particular those states where manufacturing traditionally has been strong is starting to struggle. We've had under this government the four largest 
budget deficits that this country has ever seen. Uh, that has driven up uh, the dollar, it's driven up interest rates, it's, we're, we're not seeing the fundamentals in the correct positions Come to on, make the, the country work for everyone and that's, that's the big problem and that's what we need to see. Doug, the, the government is coming up to a budget, the, the Treasurer has already said he's going to cut some programs, is that the only thing he should be focusing on? Uh, just before I go to that, just let me say clearly that every coalition MP I ever hear just ignores that there's, there was uh, you know, floods in Queensland, ignores there was a global financial crisis, ignores that there was fires uh, across Western Australia. They just ignore the reality of the economy. So, I mean, it's about time there was some reality checks from the coalition. In relation to the budget, my view is that we should look at revenue issues as well. And I've got a, a range of views in terms of revenue raising issues that we should look at. It just simply taxation, increasing taxation? Oh, no, I think we should do a number of things. I think we should increase the MRRT. We should increase it and expand it. That's what the IMF is saying we should do. I think that's appropriate. We should have a financial transaction tax. Brazil raised $15 billion. From there, Argentina, $3.9 billion. Uh, we should tax trusts as companies. I agree with Joe Hockey. He, he wants to do that, but the coalition uh, and the nationals won't let him. Uh, because it's about tax minimisation and avoiding debts. I think we should reduce the diesel fuel tax credit for uh, uh, miners. They've made $51 billion. They don't need support from government. We should look at the accelerated depreciation in mining. That's a billion dollars. We should look at the defence budget, $26.6 billion. Surely there's some fat we can cut there. And I, I think we should look at the number of hypothecated taxes on dental, disabilities and Gonski and ex executive salaries if they're based on short termism tax executives more well we might move on now the uh, as as I mentioned before business leaders were in town for talks with their state and federal leaders and they appear to have made some progress on cutting regulation the time and delay and uncertainty associated with two development assessment processes is a major concern of business in this country so we've resolved today to work to uh, eliminate that duplication. How can we best design a system that works, works in a streamlined fashion, works uh, quickly so people don't have these sequential assessments but is still rigorous enough to ensure that we meet environmental standards? Now that's the aim here uh, and that's what we'll be working with our state colleagues to do. Dan, you mentioned regulation before. It does seem from the meeting today that the leaders will, will uh, get to work on cutting regulation, particularly when it, as it pertains to meeting environmental standards. They've also asked business to come forward with what business regards as nuisance regulation, which could be easily gotten rid of. Will this help do the job and solve the problems that you were mentioning? Well, we've just heard uh, Doug going on about taxes and how he would like to impose more taxes upon business. Uh, in the end, we won't, business won't be able to create any wealth because it'll all be being taxed. And it's a bit the same with regulation. When this government came into power in 2007, it said for every piece of regulation it brought in, it would take one out. What in fact has happened, for every one piece of regulation it's put in, it's taken 200 out. Now it's been interesting to see that the focus has been on environmental regulation today. I would hope that the first thing that the Gillard government would do is withdraw its illegal logging bill, which is another piece of environmental legislation which will add further costs to, the, um, to our timber industry here in Australia and also will jeopardise our trade with our near neighbours. So there's a, a, there's a piece that the uh, Gillard government can start on immediately and that's withdraw the illegal logging prohibition bill. Of course there are many other issues between uh, state and Commonwealth governments. Some of those will be discussed tomorrow. Doug, one issue which has come up in recent days is Sydney's second airport. You're a senator from New South Wales. What should the O'Farrell government agree to? Uh, they should agree with the, uh, the outcome that they helped to broker. Uh, they were part of the inquiry, and the inquiry says we should build a second airport. And, and build it in the Sydney Basin? Yeah. Do you have any concerns about the decision today of the, the uh, state and federal leaders and business to look at streamlining environmental leg of regulation? As long as there's someone looking at uh, regulation. I'm not a great fan of deregulation after the global financial crisis. Look where that led us. So we have to be careful about regulation. Business have to be subject to checks and balances.
Uh, Dan, uh, Campbell Newman, the new Queensland Premier, said today that he doesn't want cooperative federalism. He wants competitive federalism where the states compete with one another to attract business. Do you think that, that uh, uh, st the, the states should be competing more or, or should they actually be cooperating to reduce the sorts of differences that business have to face between different states' regulations? Look, when it comes to uh, cutting regulation, I, I think that we need some cooperation and we need some competitiveness. I mean, it should be up to the states to in attract investment, to attract jobs to their states, and if they can do that by leading the way, by cutting regulation, then all for them. And I, I, you know, I acknowledge what Campbell Newman wants to do here. What I would hope then, though, is that the experiences at states did cut regulation and was seen to work, that they would pass that on to other states so every state in the Commonwealth can benefit from it. But in the first instance, if states want to go ahead and create the environment that's needed to uh, encourage investment and create jobs, I'm all for that. I think it actually would be a very good initiative. Do you, do you think that the Victorian Premier, Ted Bailey, should be a little bolder in the way he, uh, he approaches this subject? Look, I, I think Ted's been doing an excellent job and has already been looking at a lot of areas where he, we can cut red tape. So I would very much see him at the forefront of this. If you look at competitiveness, I think that in the health system, for instance, Victoria's led the way there. It's got a first-class health system. I think New South Wales and Queensland could look at Victoria at ways that, they could, um, that they've looked at and looked after their health system. So there's all variety of areas that the states can learn from other states on, and I think Victoria is, is doing a very good job. And finally on to the question of the Health Services Union and the Fair Work Report which will be released in a few weeks. Doug, you've already called for it to, to be released mm -hmm. now. Uh, what do you, how did you view the ACTU action in suspending affiliation with the HSU? Should it have done it earlier and should the Prime Minister be beginning to put some distance between herself and Labor MP mm -hmm. Craig Thompson? I think the report should be released uh, as soon as possible and should be released now. Uh, my view is that if uh, anyone has been involved in illegal activity within a union and written the members off, they should suffer the full force of the law and uh, the report should come out quickly and uh, the pro appropriate pr processes should be undertaken. But given that the, the Prime Minister's standing by Craig Thompson saying the, the proper processes should be followed, did the ACTU make life more difficult for her in that job? Oh, the ACTU are uh, doing what the ACTU thinks the right thing. I, I support what they've done. That's their call to do that. I was a union official for 27 years and I just find it absolutely obnoxious that anyone would be ripping their members off and, it, and they should be dealt with uh, very forcefully. Is the Prime Minister doing the right thing by continuing to stand by Craig Thompson? Well, you have to ask the Prime Minister about standing by Craig Thompson. Uh, and that's not for me to make that call. Uh, I think uh, if Craig Thompson is entitled to the presumption of innocence, is entitled to, to remain silent, is entitled to the rights that every Australian has an entitlement to, but more generally, I think anyone that's ripped my union off should be dealt with severely. And that's where we'll have to leave it. We've run out of time, but thank you to Dan Tian and Doug Cameron. Thanks, Lidl. Thanks, Dan. And thank you for joining Capitol Hill today. Please be with us at the same time tomorrow.